Yes to the light And yes to love Yes to love If you go to mybodygraph.com, there's a free generator, um, chart generator. You just need, it's similar to astrology in that you need your birthday, birth time, birth location, and just make sure you put in the correct time and watch like the month, day format. I forget what order it asks you in, but just make sure all your, your stuff is accurate. So if you haven't had the chance to do that, definitely go check that out because it'll be more helpful as we talk today. And if you get the chart and you're like, I don't know what this means, that is not atypical. It's a little overwhelming. So I'll tell you how to find your type and all that stuff. It looks like craziness. And then Emily, just let me know when you think it's good to start. I'll make sure everybody's back. It's hard to tell because a lot of cameras are off. So um, if you guys are ready, turn your camera on and we'll we'll see your face and we'll know you're ready. <laughs> and before I get started, I'll tell everybody on my body graph where to find where your type is. I just went on it today because I don't use, usually use that site. I use a one that I pay for. So I had to make sure I knew where to find it. So yeah, I could tell you awesome. guys. Perfect. All right. I guess we can get started. Hopefully everyone's here. It's hard to tell because there's no, they don't have their cameras on. So right, well, <laughs> we will get started. Um, I guess as we go, uh, yes, Kendra, that is totally fine. I'll explain what some of this stuff means, whatever we have time for. But um, just to start off to introduce myself, my name is Bronwyn Snell. I um, am obviously a part of Cosmic Connections. I do psychic and medium readings, but I also do human design readings, which is what I'm focused on today, since I figured we had a lot of the other stuff going on. So um, you can find me for any of those things in Cosmic Connections. But after today, if you are hooked and want to go down the human design rabbit hole, I am here to help you out with personalized readings. Today, we're just going to go over some of the big basics, but it gets so like fine-tuned and so minute, like with all the little details that it's hard to have a specific thing. So we'll just talk about the big stuff today. Um, so the big thing, if you went to my body graph, you'll see like your chart on the left side. And then there's like all these little gray squares. If you look under the introduction, there's a part that says strategy and authority. If you click on that box, then you'll see, it'll say your type and what your authority is. If we have time, we'll briefly talk about authority today, but we're definitely gonna get to type and strategy. Um, so for those of you who don't know me, I am a projector. So if you're a projector, I am the same type as you, um, but we'll talk about, uh, and it's kind of, I'm not at all surprised to see there's lots of projectors in the group, but we'll talk about what each one of these um, mean, and well, let's go ahead and get into it. So first of all, people are like, what is human design, and what is this chart? Like, your chart probably looks something like this. Each chart generator looks a little bit different, different colors, things like that, but for the most part, you're going to get something that looks like this. Human design is actually made up, it was downloaded by a man named Ra Aruhu in 1987, so it's relatively new, but it is a combination of all of these ancient wisdoms like astrology, the Chinese I Ching, Kabbalah, um, like Hinduism, we've got lots of things rolled into one, and so you'll see some similarities like astrology with all of the, the planets and you know, the fact that there is a chart and you're using your birth information and that's how it's generated. Then you've got um, the I Ching with the 64 gates, that, which I'll briefly go over the highlights of what's in the chart. So if you want to book a follow-up session with me, then we can get into all that. Um, you'll see the, the chakras, basically. Um, if you look here, the, the centers are like the chakras. It's just ex instead of seven, there's nine because a couple of them broke off. So very similar. And what it is, is it's your energetic blueprint. So when you're born, 
part of your energy is it's kind of like a snapshot in the sky. And that's what you see over here on the personality side. But it also comes from 88 days before you're born when it's said that the soul enters your body, which is the stuff on the design side, which is a little more unconscious and the personality stuff is more conscious. So that's kind of where everything is coming from without getting too into the weeds on human design. But the biggest thing, um, starting sort of at the biggest high level thing is type. We each have a, a human design type and there's five different types. I mentioned them in the beginning and it's um, you, you're either a manifester, a generator, manifesting generator is a combo of the two, a projector like myself or a reflector and reflectors are less than 1% of the population. And I see we have a couple, we have at least one reflector and we have like, somebody said their son was a reflector. So those are pretty rare and we'll get to see what all these different charts look like. Um, and so here they are, the five different types. And if you haven't popped your um, type into the chat, feel free so I can kind of see, but it looks like we have sort of the whole spectrum here. So that's awesome. But type is our energetic blueprint and it's the most basic aspect of our design. So we're gonna start with the manifester. And the kind of fun thing is in my family, I have four people in my family, we have four out of the five types. The only one we're missing is a reflector. So I'm able to use real time charts to show you an example of what like each type could look like, but everybody's chart looks a little bit different. So this is my husband's chart. He is a manifester. So manifestors, if you are just a manifester, not manifesting generator, these are non-energy beings because the sacral center is not defined. So that means that these people along with projectors and reflectors don't have access to all of the energy that generators or manifesting generators do. So we might find ourselves to be a little bit more tired, um, can't work like a, you know, an eight hour day, things like that. Um, these people also have a, an energy motor to the throat, but manifestors have big personalities. They're very independent. They get these creative urges. It says inspired by Gus. Gus is the little abbreviation I've picked up for God, universe, source, spirit, whatever word you use, Gus. Uh, I tend to use the word universe, um, but they get these creative urges and they're here to initiate other people into action. They're trailblazers. They're here to play, have fun, be unique. Now, some cautions like word of cautions or some conditioning that may be picked up along the way. Sometimes manifestors have big energy and they can be polarizing people. Like maybe people in the past have told you you're too loud, you're too much, you're too stubborn, you're too whatever. Well, that's nonsense. You're just a big energy and you came here to initiate people into action. And I see that a lot with the manifestors in my life. They've been the ones that kind of give me that gentle nudge to go do the big scary things. And it's really cool. Um, Every type has sort of, it's a signature theme and a not self theme. It's almost like green light, red light. So the signature theme is like the good theme. If you're feeling this feeling, it means you are aligned, you're on track, you're living with your energy. So the signature theme for manifestors is peace. If you're a manifester and you're feeling very peaceful, all is well. But if you start to feel the not self theme of anger, that means that you might have made a choice that is not in alignment. And we'll get into this a little bit in more detail as we go. Um, but anger is just that little like red caution sign that's like, you know what? I think we've made a choice that's not in our best interest. Maybe we go back and reflect and we get ourselves back kind of on the in between the lines of the road. Now, some tips for sleeping for anyone who does not have a defined sacral, so it's not colored in, it's white. It's really important that you get time sleeping in your own energy every night. And so some of us who are in couples, like obviously I like to spend the night with my husband in bed, but there's ways to go around it. So you could every once in a while go sleep in a different room. You could have separate rooms. My husband and I, finally have kind of different hours. We used to have the exact same job. So we'd work the same hours and be in bed at the exact same time. But if you have like, he goes to bed early, so he gets some time in his own energy aura. I sleep in a little bit later than him. So I get some time there. Um, but for manifestors, it's important to head to bed before you're tired. So you can lie horizontally and get some time to decompress and release some of that energy and to rest and recharge. And again, sleeping alone if possible. So that's an example of a manifester. Next one, generator. So the generator types make up about 70% of the population. So if you are a generator, 
or a manifesting generator, then you make up most of the population. You are the energy beings, the life force energy that populates our planet because you have a defined sacral. So you have the energy to do, 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 to work those long hours, to get things done. You're like the worker bee. But the, the important thing is, is that you're doing things that light you up, doing things that bring you joy. If you're doing a job or something that does not bring you joy, you're going to find your energy to be drained and you won't have that energy to accomplish it. But um, it's a generator's big attractive auras, auras. My youngest son who's four is a generator and he has just a huge magnetic, delightful energy. I mean, he's got a ton of energy, but he's just very drawn to him and you can just feel that generator presence. Um, but like I said, it's important that you choose to do things that light you up and you're not saying yes to things just to people please. Um, let's see, words of caution. Again, you may feel conditioned by society to be a people pleaser, to say yes and do things that are really a no. And we're gonna talk about how you can figure out if it's a yes or a no as a generator and manifesting generator. Um, so it's really important that you do the things that light you up and only those things. If you're doing, if you say yes to something that's a no, it's gonna clog your aura. You're not gonna be able to attract things to you that you want to be doing. So make sure that you say yes to the things that light you up, that bring you joy, and you'll be able to welcome in new opportunities. So this is my youngest son's chart right here. For generators, that signature theme, that good theme is satisfaction. If a generator is feeling satisfied, that means they're good to go. They're living in alignment with their strategy and authority. We'll learn what those words mean in just a minute. And if they start to feel frustrated, that's like the little guardrail that's like, whoa, we got to get back in between the lines on the road um, and make sure that we are making aligned decisions. So a lot of times, if you are saying yes to things that should be a no, you might start to get frustrated with that opportunity. As far as sleep goes, it's important for generators to use up all of their energy during the day because when generators get in bed, they should be able to fall asleep right when their head hits the pillow. So that's what we try to do with my son, run, 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 get all of that energy out and he usually passes out. He does not need that like downtime to de-stress. Uh, just use up that energy because they've got a lot of it. So that is the generator. And we'll have time for questions and things like that. If you think of questions, you can feel free to pop them in the chat and I'll come back to it when we get to it. Manifesting generator. So this is kind of a combination of a manifester and a generator. So my older son, he's about to be eight. He's an MG, a man gen, lots of different nicknames for him. This is his chart right here. You'll notice that there's also a defined sacral and there's usually a connection to the throat. And that's one thing that makes him a manifesting generator. This is the throat chakra right here or the throat center. So this is a combination of um, generator manifester. And these are the energizer bunnies. These people are gonna go, go, go. They have that extra like turbo boost of energy. But these people are very good at multitasking. They can do lots of things at once and get them done. They learn things quickly and then they get out and they move on to the next thing. Life should really be easy and flow as a manifesting generator, but it's not necessarily linear. So like I use just this kind of generic example of, you know, there's the societal typical thing of like, you date somebody, you get engaged, you get married, you have a baby, you do X, Y, Z. Well, maybe that's not the route that a manifesting generator goes. Maybe they do this thing, this thing, this thing, this thing, and then they wind up at the same spot that they would have anyway. Um, the caution here though, is a lot of people, like if you're a manifesting generator, you may have that conditioning that you're a quitter. So a lot of people are told when they're younger, like, why are you, like, why do you quit things so quickly and get out? Um, that's not necessarily the case because MGs learn really quickly. They're able to get what they need out of an activity. And then they're like, you know what? I'm good here. I'm going to move on to the next thing. So if you are a manifesting generator and you've been told in the past, like you're a quitter, you feel like you don't stick with things. It's just your design. You learn quickly, you get out. And hopefully you're saying yes to the things that light you up and not just doing things or continuing to do things to people, please, just like that generator. For manifesting generators, since it's a combo of the two, you're gonna have two signature themes, two not self themes. So signature theme is gonna be satisfaction or peace. If you're feeling one of those things, then um, you know that's your sign that you're living in alignment. 
those not self themes, frustration or anger, which I definitely see with my oldest come up when he's not aligned. Um, those are your signs. Well, maybe we've made some sort of choice here that wasn't in our best interest, wasn't the most aligned. So let's go back and retrace our steps and see how we can do things that are more in alignment with who we are in our designs. For sleep, also very important for MGs to use up all of their energy throughout the day. But the difference here is they need a little bit of wind down time before falling asleep. So whereas my youngest could go play outside, come in, go to bed, pass out, my oldest needs some time, whether it's, you know, watching TV, reading a book, we have like a little hypnosis meditation that he does before bed, like he needs that to be able to kind of decompress from the day with his energy before he falls asleep. So really important. Next one, this is my chart. This is me and my design right here, projectors. So projectors, I want to say, are about 11% of the population, something around there, if I remember correctly. Um, it's a newer type uh, and a newer type of leader. The projector really is like the wise guide. It's the person who kind of like the bird in the tree that can see the big picture and can see where things can be more efficient and where things can be fixed or tweaked to make things run smoothly. Projectors, also a non-energy being, just like manifestors, because that sacral is undefined. It is white. It's not colored in, um, but really able to see efficiency, improvements, and the potential in other people. It's a very focused energy. So if you have the focus of a projector on you, you can feel really lit up and really seen and validated. Um, projectors are only designed to work like two to three hours a day. Now, if you have some motor centers defined, like I have my root center defined, that's like an extra little boost of energy. So maybe I can really have the energy to work five hours a day. Um, but for those of us who are conditioned to being living in a generator world, like I used to work 12, 13, 14 hour days, and then I would get super sick and wonder what was the matter with me. Well, I shouldn't have been doing that if I was living by my design. So it's really important to be conscious of your energy and don't let, um, you know, the conditioning here is a lot of projectors might, you know, be called lazy because they need that rest. They need that time in their own energy. So it's important to know, no, my energy is just different. And even though I'm designed to work fewer hours in a day, I'm still super efficient in that time that I'm working. For projectors, the signature theme is success. So if I'm feeling successful, big thing for projectors is they really need to see to be validated and seen. And a lot of them, if they feel validated and seen, they're going to feel successful. If they don't get that, they're going to feel bitterness. And when I saw this word bitterness, I was like, ooh, I was like, that one resonates. I have felt bitter multiple times in my life when I have not been aligned. Um, and so that was a big thing like, oh man, this really resonates for me. For sleep, for projectors, head to bed before you're tired. It's kind of funny because I've been doing this my whole life anyway. I have to go and read and calm my brain down and all of that before I go to bed. And then you spend time in your own aura to decompress. So sometimes if I'm having trouble sleeping and I'm super like ramped up, I might go, we actually bought a separate bed for our like playroom. So if anybody needs to go decompress, be in their own energy and sleep the night there, then they can do that. So try sleeping alone if you're feeling like you're not recovering energetically. Now the last type, make sure we're doing okay on time. Okay, last type is the reflector. So the reflector is less than 1% of the population. And you'll know you're a reflector if you have no defined centers. You can see none of these are colored in. So this is a sampling aura. We are always, um, if you have a colored in center, you have consistent and reliable access to the themes, the energy that that center brings. If you have an undefined center, and in this case, reflectors have all under, undefined centers, you're really picking up on other people's energies. This is where you're really like empathic, really picking up on what other what's going on. So reflectors, depending on who you're with, you can really feel um, what's going on with other people. So it's really important to make sure that you're in places that feel good to you or with people that feel good to you. If it feels like a toxic environment or you get that like red flag, like, oh, I don't want to be here, remove yourself. But reflectors are really the ultimate chameleon because they can really shift and change and reflect back um, the energy of the person that they're with. So again, that caution there is just be aware of where you are and who you are with and make sure that it feels good because you are more sensitive to different energies.
For reflectors, the signature theme is surprise. So if you are feeling surprised, that is often a sign that you are um, living in alignment. And if you are feeling disappointed, that's your sign that maybe something is out of alignment. For sleep for reflectors, very similar to manifestors and projectors, you're gonna head to bed before you're tired, take time in your own energy to decompress and try sleeping alone. And there are some um, of the other, there can even be generators and manifesting generators that only have like two centers to find and are still really sensitive to other people's energy. So it's not only reflectors or projectors that are sensitive to other people's energies. It really depends on how many of those undefined or those white centers that you have. Um, all right, I'm gonna check really quick. It seems, yeah, we have, have a lot of generators and that's typically how it is, have a lot of generators, manifesting generators in the room. Um, all right, so the next part, so that's type. So be thinking about what resonates for you and what doesn't resonate, because we're going to do a little kind of journaling, reflecting, sharing, talking activity in just a minute here. But I wanted to share one big aspect, strategy. So strategy is how Gus God, universe, source, whatever your word is, interacts with us. Now, this is the big one. I will say from personal experience, I discovered human design about two and a half years ago. And I was a teacher. I had been a teacher for 15 years. I was sick all the time. I was bitter. I was living in my not self. I was not happy. I had horrible anxiety all day, every day. Like my mental health was not awesome. As soon as I discovered human design and I started living my human design and experimenting with it, I became a completely different person. Like once I started using this, my strategy and then authority, if we have time to get to that, um, my life changed and I, anxiety does not come up for me anymore. It's like once in a blue moon. And so this has really been a life-changing, powerful tool. It gave me the courage to leave the teaching profession and to find a job that suited my energy more to follow my dreams with human design and intuitive and psychic mediumship readings, all of those things. So I can't speak highly enough, highly enough of how amazing and life-changing human design has been for me. So it's not just like oh, this is a cool tool to know about myself. Like if you are living your design and experimenting and really trying to live an aligned life, it can be like game changer. And strategy is one of the big things that changed my life. So strategy, like I said, is how the universe interacts with us. So what does that mean? Each type has a strategy and it's different based on the type. And it's really gonna help us find ease and flow in life instead of like running into toxic situations and beating ourselves against a brick wall because we're forcing things that aren't meant for us. So manifestors, their strategy is to initiate and inform. I will say that manifestors only type that's meant to initiate. So what that means is they can initiate conversations. They can initiate those life chains. If they have an idea, they just go for it. And there it is. They don't need to wait on any signs, synchronicities, anything like that. The important thing here is though, to inform. When you're informing people of what you're doing, you're not asking for permission, but you're telling them your intentions because if your intention is, oh, I'm an artist, I'm going to go work on this art project for an hour, and somebody comes in and interrupts you because you didn't inform them, you're going to have that anger, that not self theme pop up a lot quicker, and you're going to, it's going to disrupt your ease and flow. So just practicing with informing, honestly, informing is great for all types. We've been doing it in my house with my manifesto husband and myself for years and years without knowing anything about human design. So initiating and informing. That's manifestors. For the rest of us, we're not meant to initiate. And so we're like, what does that mean? For generators and manifesting generators, your strategy is to respond. For projectors, your strategy is to wait for the invitation. And I'm going over all of these at once because they're very similar. So to respond means you have to wait for something external of you before you go do that thing. Now, this could be an invitation. So like somebody asks you to go somewhere, somebody asks you to apply for a job, something like that. Or it could, once you get a little more fine-tuned with what it looks like, it could be um, a sign or a synchronicity. So like maybe I have the idea, I think I want to quit my job. I think I want to work somewhere else. Well, I'm going to file that away because I'm not going to initiate it. 
I'm going to file that away and I'm going to start to wait to see if the universe sends me signs to respond to. And I usually wait for about two or three signs before, because mine is wait for the invitation. Like I said, to me, these three are pretty much the same. Um, so I'm going to wait to see if the universe sends me signs. So maybe, for example, so I use that job one, but for example, maybe um, Montana keeps popping up in in my world. And I'm like, okay, well, what is Montana? I'm going to wait. If I see, you know, a show with Montana and then I see a, um, a book with Montana and then maybe some ad or flyer comes across my thing. That's like book a trip to Montana, like go to a ranch. Okay. Well, that's my thing to respond to. Maybe there's something meant for me that has to do with Montana. And I can respond to that. That's an invitation from the universe for me to respond to. Or if I go back to that job thing, you know, I'm not going to quit my job right away because that's initiating. Maybe somebody, a friend sends me this and is like, hey, this job sounds like something you'd really be interested in. Why don't you check it out? Okay, well, that's something to respond to or that's an invitation. So making sure that it's something external of you before you respond. And let me sort of give you an example because I know it can seem a little frustrating. You're like, well, I can't initiate anything. It's not as bad as it sounds. Um, when I go back and reflect on life in times when I initiated things into action, I got myself in the most toxic situations and it was a terrible experience. When I go back and think about the good things that have happened in my life, usually it was preceded by some sort of external invitation or if you're a generator, manifesting generator, something to respond to. So in a minute, we're going to have a time to like talk and share and reflect on those times in our lives where maybe we actually did follow our strategy and we didn't think about it or we didn't and it didn't go so well. Um, finally, for our reflectors, yours is a little weird. Reflectors are very moon beings, very in touch with the moon. So you are waiting a 28 day lunar cycle because the only access, sort of consistent access to energy that you have is the moon traveling through the 64 gates. And so once you kind of get a feel for what you feel like throughout the month, you can tell if you want to do something or not. So for example, with any of these types, like if somebody invites me to a party and, um, well, this is a little bit different, but then we, we get into authority. So I, I know I'm running out of time here. So I just want to give a little, we'll do these little journal prompts, but there's something in human design called authority. And that's how you are meant to make decisions. So none of us, spoiler alert, none of us are meant to make decisions with our minds. We're meant to make decisions with our bodies. So for example, if you have emotional authority, you have an emotional wave that you're meant to feel through the highs and lows and to get to a point of emotional clarity before you make that decision. If you are a sacral generator or a sacral manifesting generator, sometimes it's called pure manifesting generator or pure generator, you're meant to make decisions with your sacral. It's like a gut yes or no, and then you follow that yes or no. For me, I'm splenic authority. Splenic is all about intuition. So my intuition speaks to me and I get that immediate yes or no, similar to a sacral, but I know like I'm very clear audience. And so I'm, I'm listening for that clear audience to give me my yes or no, my go or my stop. Um, and then there's some other ones that get a little more, um, a little more complicated, like sounding boards and things like that. But those are the big three that you'll see. If you start making decisions using your strategy and your authority, game changer because you're no longer letting your head, your brain get in the driver's seat and cause anxiety and talk you into or out of things and then putting you in bad situations where you're unhappy. Um, but yeah, so that is that is like basic overview. Now, just to let you know, there are so many components of human design before we get to our little like talk share exercise. Um, if you feel called to book a human design session with me, we would go over your specific design and there's a lot to it. So we would go over type strategy, like we just talked about today, the authority and how that shows up for you. There's all of these centers and what it means if it's colored in, if it's not colored in, 
the gates, the 64 gates, if you have a, like a circle around it, that means you have that gate activated and you have consistent and reliable energy to the themes of those gates. There's these channels. Um, if I go back to another one, let's see, like here, this is me. I have the channel 2838. So like, what does that mean? And it, it, what does it mean if it's conscious or unconscious? We have all the planets and the gates in the planets. And so what does that look like? We have the four arrows. These talk about environments that are best for us, the way we digest food and information, our perspective on the world, our motivation, our trajectory in the world. So there's so much in like individualness to each um, human design that it's hard to go over everything. Um, and then we would talk about in detail with authority, like for emotional authority, there's a bunch of different emotional waves. So we would talk about what yours is and what that looks like. But what I'm going to do is give you just a minute to take a look and you can write this down if you want. You can um, just think about it. And in a second, we'll share. Um, I know, Michelle, it's so cool. I did, like more it's since it's kind of a baby thing. Remember I said it was created in 1987. Um, a lot of people don't know about human design, but I cannot tell it is life changing. If you start to live by your design, it's amazing. And now, um, as a mom, I parent using human design, knowing that my kids are meant to tackle the world in different ways. And it's given me so much more compassion and empathy for not only my kids, but my husband too. Like our relationship is better. I actually offer parenting unpacks for human design and I offer relationship unpacks. You can look at two people's charts. And when you come together, you're like activating different things and turning on different centers and gates and stuff in each other. And so we can talk about like connection charts in those relationship unpacks. I mean, it's, absolutely phenomenal. Um, but I'm going to be quiet for just a minute here and I'm going to let you guys check these out. And if you want to respond to any of these questions in the chat, go ahead. If you have questions right now that you want to ask, go ahead and pop it in the um, chat and I'll answer those questions as we go. And like I said, that we just got the tip of the iceberg today. It's, um, it's phenomenal. And I know it's a lot of information, uh, but I mean, amazing. I cannot speak highlier, highlier is not a word of a uh, speak higher of human design. But if you have a question for me, go ahead and pop in the chat. I'll stop talking for just a second so you guys can think through these questions. And if you need any reminders of what the strategies, signature, not self themes are, just let me know and I can pop those in the chat too, or just say them. That's awesome, Laura. <laughs> Let's scroll back up to. Yeah, so Christine said like doing a job that that like doesn't light her up. It, and there's so many people that are doing that because you're doing what society has told you you're supposed to do. Um, and there's a lot of conditioning and guilt around it. Like if you start to look into what the centers mean, like I have an undefined heart center, which means I'm more likely to feel like I need to prove myself to people. And I noticed once I discovered human design, that is what I have spent my entire life doing. And that's the reason I was still doing teaching, even though I had become kind of a beast that I didn't love anymore. Um, and so I was able to reflect and start to make decisions First of all, that went with my design, but decisions that were for me and not to prove myself to anybody else. Oh yeah, yeah. When you, yeah, when you start to reflect and do some of these journal exercises, and when I do readings, I give you like a, a detailed printout of all of the information, what it means, and I also throw in some of these journal prompts so that you can really reflect on it, and you can see I, I have a homework assignment for you all, and it's to experiment for at least a week of honoring your type and your strategy, especially your strategy, so for example, um, when I first discovered human design and I found out my strategy was to wait for the invitation, when I went into my meetings, I was still a teacher at the time. When I went into my meetings, I was like, you know what? I'm not going to initiate conversation. I'm going to wait for somebody to ask me a question. And sure enough, when people asked my input on things, my viewpoint was 
actually taken and um, taken well, because if I just go around projector, like word vomiting, like this is what you should do. This is what you should do. Nobody is gonna like, they're gonna be like, okay, stop talking to me. You're rude. You know, but if they ask me for my projector wisdom, whole other game, they're open to receiving that information and it could be beneficial to them. So I like one of the first places I started experimenting was work. And then you can do it, you know, with your friends, with your family, things like that. Experiment and see how it changes for you. So Emily asked, um, I have six defined centers. Does that mean I'm more set in who I am? So the more defined centers you have, you do have more consistent and reliable access to the themes of each of those centers because each center is a little bit different in the sort of flavor that it offers your energy. So in a way, yes, um, but you still have those open centers, those undefined centers where you can take in and reflect back other people's stuff. So for example, for me, I have a, uh, undefined solar plexus and the solar plexus is all about emotions. So I found myself very empathic, very, I would always take in other people's emotions and it would, I mean, make or break my day. And so once I discovered like, okay, this is how you do a body scan and see what is mine and what is theirs and being able to cut ties with other people's stuff, it totally saved me, especially when I was still teaching. And even now my husband and my oldest son have emotional authority um, and they have the emotional wave that's called like the ratchet because it builds and builds. And then there's like blah, explosion um, and it's a lot. And for me and my youngest son, we're, we're undefined in our emotional solar plexus. So we're taking that in. So there have been times when I'm like, okay, I'm going to let you two feel through that emotional wave. And I'm going to take the little one. We're going to go up to the playroom and we're just going to kind of protect, like protect our energy. And it's not like, it's not shaming them for feeling their emotions. They need to feel through those emotions, but I understand that I can like change my course of action. So it doesn't impact me as much. Um, but yeah, the more, yeah. So, so every once in a while, you're going to find somebody with all nine centers defined. So theoretically, they might be a little more independent, a little more set in who they are, but there are ways that they are still picking up on other people's um, energies. Like when you, um, like if I have a gate defined and my husband has the opposite gate defined, like on the picture, like when we come together, all of a sudden we have a channel that's defined. So that's new energy for both of us. You know, there's lots of little tweaks. Any other questions? Did anybody have any big aha moments? I know we've we've got a couple examples here. Um, some aha moments about type strategy, all of those things. I tell you, authority is when it really gets into. Like, so for splenic authority, I can tell you so many times with the big decisions in my life where I knew in the moment my intuition told me this is the way to go. And I let my anxiety, my head, my conditioning from my parents talk me out of doing whatever it was. And then I just was in the most toxic situation or whatever. But now that I'm listening to that splenic authority, I mean, it's game changer. Let's see, I'm gonna read through these. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep, yep. So, um, and it's so, it's so interesting to be aware of how like your family, especially if you're like a generator type and your kids are not, if they're like a reflector, a projector, a manifester, being aware of how your energy or lack of like access to your energy can affect them. So I grew up with all generators, manifesting generators in my family, and they, they used to, um, that like joke about how lazy I was. And it didn't matter that I was working 12, 13, 14 hour days, like even as an adult, if I, I would get exhausted, you know, go over to their house, lay down, might fall asleep. And all of a sudden I was lazy because I was taking a nap and nobody was ever aware. Oh, this girl's energy is completely different from everybody else that's in here. And it doesn't make it like make the person less of a person. It's just their energy is different. And so me knowing these things about my kids um, or even knowing that I'm feeding off of my kids energy, because when I'm with them, it's activating my sacral and I can feel like I have sacral energy. But the second they go to bed, I'm like, oh, my gosh, I'm exhausted because I can't like feed off of their energy anymore. Mm hmm. 
Yeah, it's so, it's the emotional aspect. Like my husband has always been emotional. Like the other day I wrote this letter to my kid's teacher because it was like an assignment for back to school. And he said he read it and he cried. And I never cry because I'm like emotionally neutral. I don't, that's just how I am. And I was like, and I used to like judge him for being emotional and sensitive to stuff. But now I'm like, oh, he's like, that's his emotional wave. He's going to feel it more deeply than I am. Yeah, if so, this is a good point. So Christine said, even though I'm a generator, I can't do long days and would need naps if I did. So one thing to ask yourself if you're a generator or manifesting generator and you find yourself getting tired easily, is there anything you're doing that you don't feel lit up about? And if you're, you don't feel lit up, can you take that thing off your plate? Or is there a way to like, let's say you run a business and there's something that you don't love doing. Is there a way to put that task onto somebody else? So let's say I'm an entrepreneur and I hate doing social media. Can I hire someone to do my social media? You know, things that don't light you up, trying to get those things off your plate. Cause those are going to be energy suckers, even for generators and manifesting generators. energy vampires. Yes, I can myself be an energy vampire if I'm around the right people. Yeah, but Emily, so you're doing what lights you up. So you have, because you love what you're doing, it's giving you more energy. And you also may have, you said you have six centers to find. So you, you have motors um, like the root center, the heart center, you know, some of these are motors and they're going to give you an extra, I call it like a turbo boost of energy. So like I get in my root center, I get that. Um, let's see, where am I? Like this root center is a motor center. Um, that gives me like a turbo boost of energy. So any of these four right here are the motors. So if you have any of those defined, you get a little boost of energy, but it makes a difference if you're doing what lights you up or what, what does not let you up. And one thing that I want to mention before, I, I know I'm going to have to wrap it up here, but um, for those people, I know some people get discouraged when they find out that, you know, they're not manifestors and they're not meant to initiate. The way that you can invite invitations or things to respond to is share, have fun, be curious, play, share the things that you love without any attachment to the outcome. And I promise you those invitations or those things to respond to will come. I've seen it myself. Like when I started doing human design readings, I was like, I'm just going to share little tidbits about human design. Um, if you look at my social media, I did for all of the 64 gates, I like did a corresponding Disney character to like who represents that gate. And it was to help me learn. There was no like attachment to the outcome, but people really connect with those. And then they start asking for those human design readings or they start, you know, and the invitations come. So do the things that light you up, share your joy, and people are going to start giving you things to respond to. So don't feel like you just have to sit there and twiddle your thumbs all day and like wait for something to respond to. By sharing your joy, you're going to attract those things. And also, and one more thing, because I've seen a couple of people, if you're a generator or a manifesting generator, there's also something called functional burnout where, yeah, you have the energy to do, 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 but you also need to rest. So if you're feeling drained or getting really sick or things like that, that could be your little trigger to know, okay, I might be in functional burnout. I'm not finding joy. My, my sacral is not telling me yes or no anymore. Like I'm, I'm just kind of living in a fog. That's your clue that you have to rest because just because you do have the extra energy to do things doesn't mean that you have to do everything. So keep that in mind as well. But anyway, well, I'm going to, I'm going to stop sharing my screen. I'm going to stop talking, but I hope everybody got at least some sort of tip, something that resonated with them. And here's your invitation, your thing to respond to. If you want to dive more into your human design, I have several different options um, in my Cosmic Connections store. So I'd love to meet with people, help you out, tailor that session to you. I also pull in my intuitive stuff as we go through it, if there's anything that I think would be beneficial. So um, it's kind of a little combo deal, but I would love to connect with people. It is my passion. I love human design, but again, also love the psychic and medium readings as well. So, but thank you, Emily, so much for having me and letting me share today. Thank you, Bronwyn. You're fantastic. I love you. I'm so glad you're my friend. Thank you so much for being here.
and you do amazing work. So I definitely recommend you if anyone's Thank interested you. to dive, dive deeper with Bronwyn. So